<laughs> All right, I am Pops. Throwback Thursday. Pink Panther. That's right. 60 years ago, 1963, the original Pink Panthers, Peter Sellers. And it, was a, it wasn't last week. It was the week before Mrs. Pops and I had watched this. I did a little story that they're talking about doing some sort of reboot or reimagining with Eddie Murphy attached. And um, when we had moved, I had this box set of the movies and it comes in like a big case and it's got like a pink, almost like a fabric on it. And when we moved, it um, didn't get wrapped. So it kind of got scuffed and banged around a little bit. So I had set it aside to kind of look at it and see if I could, I don't want to say salvage it, but if I clean it up and kind of put it back as close to its original uh, condition as it was. And we just kind of forgot about it. I just kind of sat, set aside. So I tracked it down. I said, we need to watch these. You know, you know, I got, I have like, I have like brain worm. Like once I get something in my head, like, oh, Pink Panther, I need to watch that. So this is my thoughts on rewatching Pink Panther. And the biggest thing was I should know. And I didn't know. And it's funny because um, when I pulled the poster up, this is the actual retro poster. I'm like, oh, yeah, David Niven is top billing. And I'm like, oh, yeah, because my first impression and Mrs. Pops as well said the same thing. Like, this is a lot of David Niven. <laughs> Peter Sellers has his moments and it's a lot of physical comedy and it's played for gags. He's always falling down, bumping into things, knocking things over. That's that's kind of the essence of Inspector Clouseau at the way the Pink Panther is presented. This is really about the Phantom and kind of a romance and trying to get this uh, Pink Panther diamond and that kind of thing. Uh, but I kind of forgot. And she was really kind of put off by that because she was like, I don't find David Niven appealing. Like she just doesn't work for her. So to be honest, our rewatch was almost like it was rooted in some disappointment because of how we remembered it. And as, as we watched the film, because it's um, it's not a very complicated film. I actually thought of it as more, I, I, for some reason, had other movies all sort of like thrown together into this first movie. I thought there were a lot more chase sequences. I thought that there was um, that there's a there's a nude resort scene that's actually in another film. So and I don't want to get into all that because I know which ones are which. But I, I the chase sequences in this are almost like cheesy Mad 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 World type stuff. Um some of the stuff kind of works, kind of doesn't work. Um, I was just kind of like, wow, well, it's almost like more of a romantic comedy as well, because David Niven's character, who is, you know, he's played up as kind of like this wealthy socialite who is secretly called the Phantom. He does these uh, uh, high profile robberies and leaves this glove behind as his like uh, his call sign. And Inspector Clouseau thinks that he's going to figure out the fact that he's going to go after the Pink Panther. And most of the film sets at this um, exclusive ski resort where the uh, the princess, her name Princess Dala, she was, she inherited this uh, diamond from her dad, the, the Rahamaja, uh, uh, Rahama Raja, uh, Lee, easy for me to say. And you're kind of like constantly in this state of, you know, will he get it? And you have this sort of like he's drugging her or he's trying to get her drunk scene. That was probably like, ah, it probably doesn't age too well. It was fine. Um, the, the the thing about Inspector Clouseau's significant other, I guess it's a wife, right? Is it, is, isn't she the wife? Let me look at some notes here real quick. Um, hmm. Yeah, wife. The wife is having an affair with a phantom. And I thought to myself, wow, that's, is that kind of like risque for the time? Cause, and I thought it was like, wow. Cause she's like, she's got elaborate furs and money's being spent. She has these silly excuses that play a, at this finale. And that's kind of the essence of the film is, you know, can he get the jewel? Can Inspector Clouseau catch anyone? Those kinds of things. And then there's like this other nephew that's brought in. This is where Robert Wagner, his name is George. Robert Wagner's brought in. And it's funny because when you go to certain sites, I think it's Rotten Tomatoes. Robert Wagner has got top billing, which I thought was terrible. <laughs> absolutely terrible um i really don't care for george he never really worked for me the fact that the wife would be into david niven married to peter sellers and then be chased by robert wagner was almost like it was just too much for me like i'm just like okay we've just got yeah way too much for this woman um but the film is fun we had a good time um the comedic elements really work when they center around peter sellers 
I don't care as much. I didn't, we didn't enjoy a lot of the chase sequences and some of that kind of stuff. And at the end, you know, they're at this costume party, which is going to be this big culmination of the theft. And there's Clouseau and like a, he's in like a suit of armor so he can barely move. So that's played for gags while they have this sort of like George and uh, Sir Charles, who's the phantom end up in gorilla costumes. And you end up with this side by side shot with the gorilla on each side of the wall. It's played for gags and it's fine. It felt more juvenile than I remembered in that in that regard, as far as like what the hum- what, what humor is there and how it would work. Oh, I got the wrong. It helps to bring up the right trailer, doesn't it? Um, so it uh, it's one of those things where you have a memory of something being at a certain caliber or quality, and then when you watch it, you're like, doesn't quite get there. So. Uh, let's play this. It's going to play over here, over there. The music, uh, again, so so the Pink Panther animation and the music are so iconic. I think it also, like, impairs my judgment or my evaluation of this as far as the legacy goes because all of this I always loved. I always loved the Pink Panther cartoon and stuff as a kid, too. And him, and, and, and it's just, it's, oh, it's so fun watching these little sequences that they kind of inclu- include and incorporate. And this is part of the trailer. They include some stuff that's not in the movie, which I enjoy. And this is, they, they do a great job of putting him in the coat and having the Phantom there and almost catching him regularly, I think is great. Um, there's the wife. This is actually the end of the film. And so the spoiler alert is that uh, everyone's been caught. George and sir charles are caught and yet uh the wife comes up with a scheme to plant the diamond in inspector clouseau's pocket and when they have this like real vigorous interrogation of him when they call him to the stand he pulls out a handkerchief and it's attached to it it's just played up for the blunder and all that kind of stuff yeah yeah Okay, yeah. So, oh, she's constantly trying to talk about how she's not interested in sleeping with him, and this is the this is the famous scene that's the best part of the whole movie, in my opinion, that I remembered and I really enjoyed, and we played for laughs. Was the um, under the bed? Who's under the bed? So the wife ends up in bed. Clouseau's trying to get with her. The Phantom had snuck in. You know, David Niven under the bed. Then George sneaks in. It's like it's a lot of this, you know, back around the room kind of played for gags. It's people coming in the room and out of the room. This is in the maid. I, I this is the best part of the movie. I love that part. I think it's that, that part was a lot of fun. And this is the hot uh, princess uh, during that sequence. Oh, this the kitty cat joke. Like the tiger is gonna pr- protect me, Mister Tiger. No, nah, you're a terrible protector. It's like ugh. I didn't care. For, I I don't know. It's not about him getting her drunk. It was more about like the silliness of all this. And I don't understand why it was so complicated to have all of this in there just to find out the diamond is actually not there. It seemed like we could have moved this along a little bit quicker or made it more interesting. So by the way, the animation in this trailer is just a lot of fun. He's constantly fun. Yeah, this is the George with her. And this is her on the ground, but then Clouseau's picking her up because he drops her. Um, yeah, this is this. Actually, this scene actually kind of worked pretty well. That this part of that ski resort stuff actually works okay. This is like a song and dance number in this film, which doesn't normally work, but in this case, they kind of wrote it in, so it does kind of make sense. It, it's it's fine. Um, I will say the Phantom has a little assistant that's always kind of like helping him, but he like disappears for massive segments of the film. You have no idea where he is or what he's doing or how he's relevant. Um, that would be my biggest criticism for any of that. But all of it works well. There were some good gags and some good fun with it all. Um, yeah, the trailer, the trailer actually kind of makes it more fun in some ways than it actually, there's the costume party with Clouseau in the suit of armor. So, uh, so no, Mrs. Pops will have to call it and see, are we going to, are we going to watch a shot in the dark? Are we going to kind of move on or take a break from it or not? I don't know. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the rewatch, but not to the level that I kind of expected because I would have held this up at a much higher standard, closer to like you know, a three and a half to four star. And this is more like a three and I'm probably being kind with three to three and a half, but it's, it's in that kind of thing where it definitely is not, didn't kind of age well uh, for me as I did in my head. So 
Anyway, that's my take on it. It's a classic film, so I totally understand how I'm going to get some pushback from you guys. Totally get it. Not everything ages well. Comedy is one of the more challenging things as far as the longevity of how well it's thought of and that kind of thing. So uh, love your thoughts. Let me hear. <laughs> 